Guys, welcome back to the channel. Racer X here, and I am back with my good buddies at the Hearst Autoplex once again because they have a brand new vehicle that I have been looking forward to reviewing for quite some time. Ever since I heard about it, I was like, oh man, I have got to go check this one out. And uh, today is the day. It is like number one off of the truck coming right over here to these guys. And today I'm going to review it. It is the 392 uh, Wrangler. I'm really, really excited about this. I cannot wait to show you guys all the features that this thing packs. It's going to to be a good one. Also guys, if you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. Also, uh, you can find uh, the notification bell down there. If you hit that, you'll get notified of my new content. You can also follow me on Instagram and here we go. <laughs> we got the thousand horsepower helmet. <laughs> there it is. It is the brand new Jeep Rubicon, but it's not just any Jeep Rubicon, it's a Wrangler, of course. This is the 392 equipped uh, Rubicon, 470 horsepower, 470 pound feet of torque. This is a monster, and I have been super excited ever since they announced this car because one of my main drawbacks with Jeeps has always been when I've driven them, I've always felt like they were a little bit underpowered. And yes, I realize they have a ton of off-road capability and that's not really what they're made for, but just for everyday type driving, I kind of thought with the six cylinder, they were just a little underpowered. Well, Dodge and FCA and Jeep, they said, you know what? Screw it, we're gonna stick a 392 in it. Well, guess what? There it is in the flesh. This is actually the first one I have seen and uh, I am super excited to bring it to you today and drive it. I wanna show you some additional features that this one has that former Jeeps did not. So let's jump into it. Now, one of the first things you'll notice about this particular Jeep, obviously it does say 392 very clearly right here, which I absolutely love, but check out the uh, the hood here. Definitely a different look. This is actually the Hydro Glide air induction system, and you can see uh, right there, it really makes this thing kind of stand out from other Jeeps. And uh, this thing still has all of that off-road capability, and it wades quite a bit of water. Well, basically, they figured out a way to take this system and uh, actually kind of sift through all of the water that may be coming into the intake. So the engineers at Jeep uh, took great lengths to make sure that uh, we didn't get any water into the intake of this uh, this beastly engine in here. So that is kind of the first thing that I wanted to point out. It really does give it a, a just a beautiful look. Of course, this thing has 17-inch beadlocked wheels, which I think is also fantastic. You got BFGs on there, 33-inch wheels. And as we step around to the side, it most definitely is a Rubicon. But I love that raised hood look right there in the middle really really sharp and as with all of the jeeps you kind of get the removable doors and some of the other features that you really really like you jeep guys out there i know how you are and you love uh, going off-roading with the doors off of these things of course you get your spare back here uh, really nice look we'll look at the interior here in just one second but another thing i do want to point out is the exhaust here you do get the uh, the quad tips down here but they kind of face downward and of course you have an active exhaust on this you can actually change it from quiet to more of a sport mode which is also a first for a jeep which is very cool one of the things i think is quite unique about the jeep <laughs> this is the front transfer case right here but as you get up under here and kind of take a closer look uh check this out the drive shaft which is actually right there that actually doesn't go down the dead center of the vehicle it's actually skewed off to the right a little bit, which is just kind of neat looking. And then of course you've got a rear transfer case back there as well. But uh, it is kind of interesting how they how they situate the drive shafts in this car to kind of help with the off-road ability. Something to think about. Another thing that is very cool about these Jeep Rubicons is these terrain sensing shocks that come from Fox. You can see the Jeep logo right on there as well. But um, these things really keep you planted on the ground. They help you to climb over all sorts of obstacles. Um, the fact that they put these on both the front and the back, another really nice feature of this vehicle. Now, of course, here is the rock star of the 392 Jeep Rubicon. Yes, it is that naturally aspirated 6.4 liter Hemi engine, 470 horsepower this monster puts out. I absolutely love it. A couple of unique things about the Jeep as well, I, I did notice. Obviously, like your hood release, yeah, they're right here. <laughs> they're not inside uh, the car like you would find on traditional cars. Also, one thing that is a little bit unique is the fact that the prop rod actually comes down from the top of the hood, and it's not actually under here. But this is that Hydro Glide 
technology I was speaking about a few minutes ago. You can see that actually funnels the water away from the intake system, and you can see the air actually flows over through this part and comes down in through the intake here. So it keeps your engine safe. I really love the fact that Dodge and FCA uh, Jeep, you know, they put all of that uh, engineering to work to make sure that uh, it kept the engine in something like this, something as capable off-road as a Jeep Wrangler. Keep that big engine safe because now we've got lots of torque to play with. So there's a lot of added ability that this vehicle has. One other quick item of note is, is look at the care that Jeep took to get everything lifted up in the vehicle as high as possible. You've got your fuse box, your battery, all of that stuff is really located about as high up in this hood compartment as you can get. And obviously that is because of the fact that people will take this into swamps and all sorts of different things. But just look at how they, they made extra effort to kind of lift everything up as high as they could possibly get it to, keep, to make sure this thing could wade as much water as possible. Very, very neat. Now, as we look at the interior of the Jeep Rubicon 392, this is one of the other things that was a major drawback for me initially, but they have solved it once again. This thing basically got the SRT treatment inside because look at these beautiful seats that uh, Jeep put in here for us. You've got these uh, beautifully appointed leather seats with kind of that gold stitching. This black and gold on this really stands out. You've got this larger uh, steering wheel here with the, uh, with the gold stitching once again. Of course, you do get different gauges in this. So very much an upgraded feel on this particular Jeep as we get over here into the middle. Of course, you've got your, your four-wheel drive high and low your gear selector here in the middle but uh, look at how nice the uh, the inside or in the center section is in this particular vehicle your of course your 8.4 inch screen there in the middle and of course you've got all of your familiar controls here which we'll go through here momentarily but a really really nice place to sit as you can see it does say Wrangler right over there and of course we know that the doors on this will come off so as we jump over here to the back and you can see you do have your your locks and stuff like that on this door but you can see there are no controls on these back doors what they've done is they've actually put them here in the center section so you control your windows in the back uh, from here <laughs> which is kind of neat you do get a 115 outlet and a couple of usbs here as well but once again very nicely appointed on the seats of this of course these will fold down so there's a lot of functionality here and uh, we'll take a quick look at the back as well so in the back of this vehicle, of course, you do get your full-size spare here. Really easy to open this particular vehicle. You just pop it on open, and you can see the glass actually does stay down momentarily, but it does just lift right up. So you do get a really nice uh, a really nice storage area back here. It's actually a little bigger than it may look on camera. So you, you have a lot of functionality here. Of course, you do get the big Alpine sub in the back, but uh, they really did think of a lot of different things. You've got a 12-volt a right, uh, right here. So a really nice, easy uh, section to, uh, to kind of get into here on the Jeep. This particular one also comes with the optional $300 towing package, so you can see it's right there. Well, this thing doesn't tow a whole ton, but it is kind of nice to have that functionality, and of course, you do have your rear tow hook back here as well. Now, one of the things that you always have to point out with Jeeps is obviously the roof comes off, which is pretty darn cool. And you've got a series of levers and things like that uh, right up here and here, both uh, on the on the driver and the passenger side, and of course in the back. But really, this whole entire roof section is made to come off in pieces, and it's actually quite easy to do. So uh, another really great feature about the uh, the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. Now here is the driving position in the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392, and it is a really nice place to sit. It does feel uh, actually quite a bit nicer than a lot of the Jeeps I have sat in before. Obviously, as you look over here, we do have uh, just really your window and your mirror controls there, but a really nice center section in this vehicle as well. You can see, as I mentioned, there's the info uh, infotainment center, but I really do like the gauges in this. They are definitely upgraded in, in here. Uh, once again, they've got some uh, really nice, uh, they're more of an analog style, except for obviously in the middle but a very nice look and feel to these gauges certainly feel upgraded from the standard Jeep and of course you do have lots of steering wheel controls including your paddle shifters which I really like now as we look over here you do have your climate control here uh, also one thing that is very cool I did mention this is there's your exhaust modes and you can definitely hear it get louder when you uh, when you do the performance exhaust on so that is kind of a neat thing so when I drive it I'll actually leave that on for you guys once again you do get your window controls right here as well something that Jeep thought of which is very cool you do get a uh, auxiliary and USB port here. And then of course down here, uh, a couple of different options here. You've got your off-road. Some of your off-roading ability will all come from down here. There's a lot of different ways to configure this particular vehicle. And of course you do have your four-wheel drive high and low, your gear selector here. Um, you've got your cup holders, your e-brake, and a nice little center section here for storage that actually comes up 
and uh, it's pretty deep there as well. And then, of course, as we look over here, uh, you do have your kind of your vents up top. It does say Wrangler right here. And uh, you've got, and you're actually sitting pretty close to the passenger, believe it or not. And as we look back here, we've got our rear seats as well. So a fairly roomy vehicle. You're sitting a little closer to the passenger than you would in some of their other cars, but it's just a different feel. Now I'm actually aboard the 2021 uh, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. And I have to tell you, it is such a different feel driving one of these uh, than what I'm used to. Obviously I'm used to kind of a sports or a muscle car type feel. This is not like that at all. I I'm very kind of upward if you wanna, <laughs> I guess for better lack of terms, you sit very upright in this. Everything is very square feeling. You're sitting fairly close to the passenger next to you. And uh, you are you feel like you're kind of close to the roof line a little bit. It's just, it's just very, very different. But I do love the way this this center section is a point that I can't wait to see how the 392 really changes the drivability of this. The dash, man, it does sit really, really high where the sills sit kind of low, so it kind of swoops down on the side. So um, it would take me a little bit of getting used to uh, to, to kind of get into this and drive it every day, but it definitely is something I, I could do. I, I can't wait to see what the street manners are like on this. I know the off-roading capability has been increased as well, so let's take it down the road and see how it drives. So now getting to drive this thing down the road, you can really feel a huge difference in obviously like the Jeeps I've driven of old and this thing. This thing does feel way more like a beast. And part of it is due to the gearing, right? This one has 373 gears in it versus like a Charger with a 392 in it would have 309s in it. So a definite difference. So this thing really feels like it's coming off the line quite hard. And uh, it really increases the responsiveness of this particular vehicle, making it way more fun than uh, all all the other Jeeps that I have driven coming out of a corner. Oh man, it actually wants to spin the tires a little bit. That is exciting. I have to be completely honest with you. It really does. Even though it doesn't really have double the power of a, of a you know, standard Jeep with a 3.6, it really does feel that way. It feels like it's got double the power and about three times the responsiveness. And this thing has just woken right up. And this is why I was excited about driving this particular package. Because here I am at a stop sign and I can, of course, go down here and I can change it to just rear wheel drive only, or I can change it to all wheel. But just coming off from a stop sign, here we go. Oh, oh. Man, listen to it. It sounds really good. And no longer is a Jeep Rubicon slow by any stretch of the imagination. So really one of the great things about this is you still retain all of that amazing off-road capability that you get with a normal Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, but you've just increased your kind of straight line performance to something that is, uh, is just never really been heard of in one of these. As I mentioned, this is the fastest uh, Jeep Wrangler that they've ever made. It is probably the most capable by far uh, that they've ever made. They actually said this thing will run a 13.0 in the quarter mile, 4.5, zero to 60, um, which is a far cry from the other Jeeps that we've seen in the past. So um, man, they hit a home run with this version. Yeah, I will freely admit, uh, this version is just so much more pleasant to drive with this bigger, more robust power plant in it. They've, like I said, they've solved the power issue. They've really solved the interior issue for me a lot in some ways as well. I really like the interior of this particular package. So um, yeah, I kind of went from not being a huge fan to uh, actually being a pretty big fan of the Jeep Wrangler, at least in this trim. So this is by far the most satisfying uh, Jeep Wrangler that I have ever driven. I mean, it has fantastic street manners, um, loads of low end torque and power. Now I will admit, obviously it, it feels a lot like an SRT would on the inside, but this, make no mistake, this is not actually an SRT. I mean, it does basically have the SRT power plant in it. You don't get the SRT pages in this, um, but it still has some pretty cool features. As I mentioned, the exhaust modes and all that kind of stuff, but the low end torque of this, especially with that gearing, uh, it is fantastic. So the capability of this particular thing is great. And as I mentioned, it does have the great street manners as well. So you could easily daily this thing and just have an absolute blast with it. Go take it off roading, take it to the beach, do whatever you want to do. I'm a huge fan of this package. Now I do want to tackle kind of the elephant in the room. It's hey, racer X, how much does the thing cost? Well, I will tell you, I went on Dodge's uh, builder earlier today and basically the base price of this is 75 grand. So it is Hellcat money right out of the box. Um, there aren't a ton of bells and whistles that you can 
can add to it. There are a few things. They've kind of got like a power top that you can add um, for it's like two grand. And I think for like $4,200, uh, they do have kind of the uh, a different door package, the half door package, which some people actually really like. And you kind of get the blacked out doors on the, on the half and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, that's another package that you could add to this. But I mean, even on the upper, upper level, I think you're spending like 81 if you completely deck it out somewhere in that range. So, um, but is it worth that? I think it really depends on uh, on who you ask. If you're a hardcore Jeep person and you actually want that that extra power, um, this is an absolutely fantastic package. It would be great to daily this. Um, it is kind of a niche type vehicle, a very specialty type vehicle. So I think it's going to take a special kind of buyer with some somewhat deep pockets to be able to afford this particular package. But this is by far the best Jeep Wrangler I have ever driven. And there you have it. That is my review of the Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392. Fantastic. I absolutely love it. It's not the cheapest thing in the world, but it really is a lot of fun to drive, just as I as expected. Super punchy, this. I mean, it completely changed my thought process on Jeep. Uh, and so um, I would rock this all day, every day if I had one. It is a great package. So anyway, guys, let me know what you think about this one in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, Racer X.